All right, Flick here from the Nerd Soapbox, and today we're at the 2023 Pasadena Comic Con with a special guest. Our guest <laughs> is a former child actor, best known to the Soapbox gang for films such as The Ten Commandments, Houseboat, as well as providing the voice of Lucky in Walt Disney's 101 Dalmatians. We're about to talk to Mimi Gibson. <laughs> Hi, Mimi. Hi. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're, 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 you're cute. So are you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So how's your convention so far? Hey, it's great. We've been having a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Any fun fan interactions you could tell me about? Gosh, I met this 101 Dalmatian woman. Yeah, yeah. She had 101 Dalmatian everything. And she had me sign 101 Dalmatian <laughs> everything. It was Whoa. really amazing. That people still know and love that movie. They yeah. do. A lot of people do. And oh, yeah. all ages. It's good for all ages. So oh, that's yeah. what I like. Yeah. So, so when you were growing up, what were... What, what were your interests? Were you into dolls or reading or cartoons? I was into dolls right. and reading, mm. especially reading. Right. I, and I love to read even now. And I liked coloring. And I still color. Inside even or outside now. the lines? Of course, inside the lines, I'm a girl. <laughs> How old were you? when you first got into acting? Two and a half. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Okay. How, how did you come to voice Lucky in 101 Dalmatians, and what was the recording process like? Oh, well, um, I went on an interview. All right. And there were a bunch of us kids. Yeah, yeah. And we had to 101 do, kids? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> But maybe 50. Oh, that's A cheating. lot of kids. Yeah. And uh, we all had to do English accents. Oh, wow. Because everybody lived in England. Right, right. Uh, in that movie. Cheerio. Yes. <laughs> oh, Pip. Pip, Pip. Anyway, um, so five of us got hired. Right, right. And it was fun. And you were lucky. And I... I, but I didn't know it. I was lucky to get the part, yeah, but yeah. I didn't know the other lucky part. <laughs> I didn't know until years later yeah, that yeah. I was lucky. Really? Nobody told me. Nobody told your character name? No. 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 So they had us do all the lines for all the puppies. Oh. And so nobody knew who they were. Oh. And we'd go in one at a time and right. do all the lines. Oh, wow. So years later, when I was an adult, yeah, yeah. I found out I was lucky in okay. more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Can, can you tell me about your experience playing the role of the blind one's granddaughter in the film The Ten Commandments? Well, The Ten Commandments was like being in animal heaven. Really? Because the Ten Commandments took over Paramount Studios. All right. The whole studio, all the sound stages, everything. And wow. they had every animal you can imagine. We had camels, we had zebras, we had tigers, we had lions. Whoa. And it was so exciting to be a kid on that set. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. Do, do you have any memories of, of working with Charlton Heston or Cecil B. DeMille? I have a wonderful memory Very. of working with Cecil B. DeMille and Charlton Heston. Of course, Charlton Heston, when we were doing the parting of the Red Sea in yes. front of the green screen, Yes, yes. He would come late because he had to take a step down to play Moses. Really? Because he thought he was God. <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke on You're the set. You're a hoot. <laughs> so we, we filmed 
uh, all that morning, there were a bunch of us. Yeah, yeah. And there were a lot of extras. Right. And everybody was scared of Cecil B. DeMille because yeah. he could yell at you oh, yeah. and you'd be real sorry if you did something wrong. Right, right. And so we did one shoot of a scene and he was on a crane up above where we were shooting and he would shout down at you through a megahorn. Oh. He was next to the cinematographer yeah. on this crane yeah, yeah. with the camera. And we had finished shooting and I heard him yell, Mimi Gibson. You're like, what? <laughs> and I like I was like six. I was like, uh oh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> and he said, Good job. And I was like, so happy. It was fantastic. So happy. Wow. That's neat. Yeah. Hey, okay, so could you describe working with uh, Hollywood legends Cary Grant and Sophia Loren on Houseboat? I believe you were on the set with them for like, what, three months or something like that? Three months. Oh. And we got to go to Washington, D.C. and spend mm. a month there about. And it was really exciting. I, I have to tell you that... Yeah, yeah. The uh, producer and director, um, uh, Jack Rose was the producer and Mel Shavelson was the director and they had worked together on many movies and they were really, really lovely men. And they hired a limousine and a driver yeah. for us in Washington, D.C. And he took us to see everything that was important on the weekends so oh. we saw everything that our nation's capital had it's extra special it was wonderful wow. it was a wonderful thrill and carrie was nice and sophia was wonderful really yes she was funny and beautiful and wow. we all loved her so good to hear okay so you did six episodes of playhouse 90 yeah. What, what, was there a lot of pressure doing live television? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. You couldn't make a mistake. It was live TV. Wow. And a lot of every, rehearsal? A lot of rehearsal. Okay. But it was good. And doing the show, you'd hear the theme song start and the yeah. hair would stand up on your neck. Really? Yeah. So wow. it was, you know, it was like, you better do a good job or of else. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience working on the Children's Hour with Audrey Hepburn, Shirley MacLaine, James Garner? Well, it was also with William Wyler, the fabulous, fabulous director. Yeah. And he was easy, easy peasy. Oh, nice. He was a nice man. He was older, too. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he had been difficult in his youth, but he was, by the time we got him, <laughs> <laughs> he was very easygoing and a nice man. And Audrey Hepburn was a princess. Oh, wow. She was an absolute princess, the sweetest, sweetest thing. And Shirley MacLaine, I don't think she ever talked to me once. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy with a past life or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could have been, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was it. Well, and Jim Scarner was great. He was great. As a child, did you have a favorite type of genre that you preferred working on over others, like uh, period pieces or science fiction or drama, biblical epics? And that's it. Like, what was your favorite kind of a thing, a movie or a project to work on? Okay, TV was live TV. Yeah, yeah. We all loved live TV because you could show your ability right. to do the part and not make a mistake. Oh. And that was a big, big deal with oh, kids. Yeah. And of course, Westerns. We all loved Westerns. Horses. And if you got to ride, that was a big thrill. It's fantastic. Yeah. What, what prompted you to retire from acting, and how did you transition into real estate? Oh, well, real estate is kind of fun. It's, you More know. More acting. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> um, but uh, and you're your own boss, and you're not in an off stuck in an office oh, yeah, or yeah. anything like that. So it's because uh, you've grown up not being in an office ever and being kind of on your own. It makes and a big difference. It's uh, it's it's easy to transition into that. Um, and I left because a lot of them didn't want us anymore. They thought that we were old hat. Can Whoa. you imagine? And they said, I cannot. They said, oh. You're adorable I'd now. I know. I'd hire it. you in a second. Thanks. Yeah. They said, oh, we've hired you enough. What? Yeah. <laughs> they said that right to my face. So, um. Did, did they had to hire you because you're good. Because people I like to it. see you. Did this make any sense? I, it didn't. I mean, uh, there were a lot of us that Whoa. just had trouble getting. And I didn't ever. I, it wasn't something I wanted to do right. ever. I just like doing a job well. Yeah. And so that's. And what you I must did. have done something right because you kept getting hired. Yeah. 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 I was it, fine. Especially for the live stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us about. Can you tell us about your book? Your book, Working Kid, and uh, where can we pick up a copy of this? of this book of yours. Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah. So my book, Working Kid, is on Amazon. Oh, there's a copy right there. Oh, yes. Oh, here. Little elves brought the book in while we... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, hold it up. Hold it up. Or or my big elf. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Anyway, I left the business, yeah, yeah. but Paul Peterson, who played, hand me a photo of of yeah, houseboat, please. <laughs> okay, so this is Paul Peterson. He was on the Donna Reed show, but he was also my older brother. See that? See? Oh yeah, 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 here. Yeah. See, uh, he was my older brother in houseboat. And um, when we grew up, a lot of the kid actors were committing suicide, and they were having bad problems. It's terrible. And so Paul created a minor consideration All right. and it was to help kid actors transition into adulthood oh, wow. and I was living up in Northern California and I saw him on TV and I hadn't talked to anybody in the business in decades right. and uh, I saw that he, what he had done and I was very proud of him that yeah. was wonderful what he created wonderful he did wonderful work he helped a lot of people. What was the name of it again? The a program? minor consideration. A minor consideration. Wow. And so I called him and I said, I am so proud of you. And he said, hey, thanks, Mimi. Guess what? Hmm. We're all going back into the union and we're going to try to change the Coogan Law. And I said, hmm. I'm with you. Because none of my money was saved, and most of the kid actors at the time, yeah. their money wasn't saved. Oh, the Coogan boy. Law was to save money for kids, right, right. but it only protected contract players. And most everybody during the 50s and 60s right, right. were then independent. Oh, wow. So, That's a giant loophole. Yeah. So Paul and a bunch of us went back into the union right. and we absolutely got the Coogan Law changed and now money is saved for kids again. That's fantastic. Yep. Whoa. And we are very proud. I'm prouder of that than I am of my film career. Whoa. Because we none of us did it for money or attention. Right, right, People right. don't even know what we did. It took us eight years to get, to get a, a bill passed. Whoa. But we passed two bills. So okay. it was wonderful. It, yeah. And we're very proud. And it's because of Paul. Whoa, okay. Paul started it. Hey, do you have any advice for... Uh, for young aspiring actors? Yes, I do. If you want to do it, do it. Okay? Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> wow. Are you on social media? I, I have a Facebook page. Yeah? Yeah. What's what's the name of the Facebook page? 
Mimi Gibson, isn't it, Stephanie? Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie runs my Facebook oh, page. Oh, I'm in, go, Steph. I'm incognito. <laughs> All right. So Mimi Gibson is your Facebook page. Yeah. All right. Wow. Well, gee, thanks for talking to us. Well, you're welcome. Ah. You're a new handsome thing. <laughs> can, I, can I get a proper hug? Uh, thank you very much. Thanks All right. for talking Let's to me. Let's see who else we can talk to at uh, Pasadena Comic Con. Have fun. Thank you. We're all here I will. for fun. You're adorable. So are you. I would hire you in a second. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>